I arrived at the pool at Kingsbury Run, hoping to find a few clues. I found something else. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Disc 5 of Black Dahlia. Well, it just so happens that we had a nice turn of fate, and ran into our nice creepy man in real life this time, instead of in our dreams, which has led us into the sewers of Cleveland. Not even Black Dahlia can escape a sewer level, which in this case actually turns into a maze of sorts. We have a compass on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and it pretty much just tells you which direction you're actually facing, which is handy to make sure that you're actually not going back and forth a whole lot of places, because this maze, this small little maze, is actually really small. The main thing that the maze inside of Kingsbury Run really likes to do is put in a lot of dead ends that have a lot of locks everywhere that you can't do anything about. They are dead ends, there's no way in order to get past these doors. But just to kind of play with what everything looks like, a lot of the rooms that you're actually going to be going through look very similar, to the point where they actually I would argue, reuse screens a whole lot in order to make it seem like you're going through a place you might have been before, but it's in a different location. It also can be surprisingly dark around here. This maze is also a little bit easier than you might think, just because there is not a lot of branching paths to this maze, and to be completely honest, it kind of railroads you into where you actually need to go, but there are two notable areas that I'm going to be showing off before actually getting to where you need to go in this maze. One is here, which is pretty much where a giant fan is, and actually has something that we're able to interact with that seemingly has no purpose other than for turning the fan off. You can turn it off, you can turn it on. It doesn't have any purpose. But, eh, always good to note that you can do certain things. Who knows when it might actually be helpful in order to actually know to do that at some point. Feasibly, it like turns off the power. In another wing of this maze that you're able to go to, pretty much gives you this kind of central area, which works differently than the fan we just saw where you hit a switch and then it would turn it off off screen. This area gives you three levers in order to push and pull and it will open up the three corresponding doors in real time. You can actually see it. Which is something new for this game that I don't remember seeing in the other four discs beforehand. But seeing as they actually have the technology in order to actually do this, instead of actually hiding the animation stopping, I kind of wish that a room like this would be used a little bit more often. But again, much like the propeller, or the big giant fan, uh, not much we can do in here either, other than for fiddling with fans and looking at the effects. So, just take note of that as well. I don't know why they would just like, give you a room like that and not do anything with it. But anyway, going from our original entrance, all you really need to do is just go one to the north, you're gonna go turn into the east, go four screens to the east, and then you can turn back to the north and head straight north after that. The solution to the maze is that easy, um, especially when you get, are given very little room for error in terms of finding 
alternate routes that will get you lost. Almost there. I think it's just two more screens. You'll know you're going in the right direction when something specific actually happens. Now, I had been fiddling around in the labyrinth for a whole while. I think there is maybe a different scene, depending on how fast you actually get there, but I couldn't get it to actually trigger. That's fresh blood, all right. He must have cut his hand pretty bad. And this leads us to our first puzzle of the disc. This disc is actually really short, and it's filled with puzzles and also scenes in order to pad out the disc. What we have here is actually a puzzle that gives you pretty much a good amount of information in order to solve it. We have four valves that we're able to turn, and five gauges that we're able to get information out of. What we're pretty much doing here is we're able to turn each of the valves right or left, and that affects one of the pressure gauges um, on the screen. The only one that isn't affected is the one on the bottom middle, which is actually gives you the solution to the puzzle and what you're trying to do with the other four, which is making sure that the pressure is at 30, which I would guess would be 30 PSI. So it pretty much is just a balancing act of how much and how little you need to turn each valve to the left and to the right to make sure that all of them go to their right position. It's a pretty good puzzle, in all things considered. I wish there was more of them like this. Now, of course, it's not as easy as just making sure that all of the valves are in the right position, because certain changes of one valve can affect another pressure gauge as a result. So it's just... Taking it nice and slow, we should be able to get it with one or two fewer moves than you really need to. I think this one more, a little bit to the left. There we go. definitely got a head of us here. We don't really get a pan into this room, so we're going to take a look around. It's just a very small room is what we're in. Circular, too. In front of a very interesting looking door. Mm -hmm. We can look at it. We can also go through it. I better make a note of these weird symbols. I believe Pearson makes note of three runes that are on this door. Um, the one on the left, one on the right, and I think the one in the center? I've seen that cross shape before. It looks just like the medallion Bon Hess had at the party. Now, I would be able to, like, get footage in order to reference Von Hess's medallion, but there actually isn't any good ones. He just holds something in his hand, and it's too small to ascertain that that is the actual symbol of the Iron Cross. Other than looking it up yourself. And of course, we can't get through. Definitely can't. We can make him push the door all we want, though. Maybe it's a pull door. Who knows? But unfortunately, that means we're kind of at a little bit of a roadblock. We can't go further into Kingsbury Run. But this, at this point, we definitely need to get that cross that Von Hess had, and the only plate person we can go to in order to see if we can get it is Winslow. Which sucks, because I really don't want to see Win really don't want to see Winslow, but we always have to keep going back to him. <sighs> it's nice though that we have less pictures now to fill around with than the last time. Fortunately we can't go see Marilow either. That's a kind of a shame. Jim 
Jumbo! What can I do you for? You can definitely see a change in Pearson because he used to like politely knock on the door and like peek in. Now he just barges in. Completely. Alright, Winslow, one more time we gotta ask about this medallion. I need that medallion you found on Von Hess. Isn't there something you can do, Dick? No can do, Sport. I can't just pass around federal evidence now, can I? Uh, it's extremely important. I wouldn't ask you if it weren't. Why? What's so important about that cross, Jimbo? You look like the cat that ate the canary. I followed a suspect through the sewers underneath Cleveland. He managed to get away, but I found a secret chamber. I think this man's the torso killer. The torso killer? Well, would have long suspected he had such a hideout. His work's too messy to be conducted just anywhere. But what's this all have to do with that cross, Jimbo? Well, I didn't find a hideout, not exactly. But I came to a dead end. There was a door that looked like it had some kind of strange lock. A cross-shaped lock. About the size of that medallion. You don't say. Well, that certainly is interesting. I'll send some men over to take a look. You uh, just, just tell me where that is. <laughs> No dice. Oh, I'm the one with the jurisdiction over the torso killer. And I'm the one who's invested all his time and energy in the Brotherhood of Thule investigation. And now that it's about to bust wide open, I am not turning it over for all the money in the world. Well. Seems we've reached a bit of an impasse. I can get the medallion. You know where to use it. All right. All right, I'll make you a deal, Jimbo. I'll come with you. I get the credit for solving the torso killings. You get the credit for cracking this Brotherhood of Thule thing, huh? Not bad for the career, that. I'm not looking for a career boost, Dick. I just want this case solved and these murders stopped. Well, of course. Better be on the level with this secret hideout, Jimbo. I'd hate to ruin a new pair of shoes for nothing. It's back here, all right. I could barely keep up with him. Nearly lost me in those plastic tunnels. I would have imagined he would have come at you with an axe. place is awful. <sighs> All right. Back at the door, except this time. Ah, he's really close, though. Dick Winslow has been added to our party. Technically, but not exactly. He's just kind of standing there waiting for us to do something. I'm surprised it actually gives us options here, because the only thing we can literally do is just, like, go forward. Because, um, even though we kind of have access to the medallion now, Winslow still has it. So, we need to still get it from Winslow in order to use it on the door. I need that medallion now. Here you go, sport. I trust you know what to do with this.
that's a good sign, Jim. Jim, look at the faces. Oh God, I think I'm gonna be sick. Sorry, buddy, you're on your own. Dick! Dick, come back, it stopped! Well, I guess it's just you and me now, you sick bastard. I'm sure pay no attention to the glowing that just happened in that room. Almost like an intruder alarm. But I guess not. Let's get a good look at this room that we just kind of waltzed past in that scene, though. Nice and good and creepy, though. Definitely will say. Adorned with symbols. And more nice creepy statues. Alrighty then. That's all cool and well and good. But now we have our next obstacle to deal with. Remember when I said that uh, the last puzzle was actually really good and gave you the information of how to actually solve it? Uh, this one's the opposite. It's actually really bad. I kind of put it in the same kind of category as the can as the wax puzzle from disc 3, because you are given no information on how to solve it. All you're really doing is trying to just flip uh, switches on the inner part in order to make the outer part um, do something pressure-wise. The thing is, it kind of gives you the screen and you don't even know what you're supposed to click on until the cursor tells you you're able to click on it. There are eight little pieces that you can slide up and down, and depending on how you slide them, and in what order, you will get different things happening. The other big problem I have with this puzzle is it gives you very little feedback, and you always have to be watching to see what happens when you actually hit each of the uh, switches, I guess I could really call them. It's so minimal what actually happens, it's more like a, like a spring, kind of just like gets pushed in, almost. But anyway, it's a pain in the butt, and I tried to find any sort of information on how to actually solve this puzzle, but it's m more like you have to figure out what switch does what to what um, outside piece making it spring in. I it's difficult to explain, and I wish there was more about it I could really say, other than kind of like number them in clockwise formation from the top two, to the right, to the bottom, to the left. I think the other problem with the puzzle is that not only do you have to push in a lot of them in, but you have to take two of them at the end out as well to make sure that every single spring, I guess, is inside of this door, go in. They, uh, I, I really don't like this puzzle a whole lot. Uh, hopefully we'll get a better one next time. And honestly, with very little fanfare, we just kind of go through. Doesn't show us opening the door in any way, or at all. We just kind of go down the really long tunnel that is kind of behind us into this rather different looking area. Eerily lit kind of man-made at this point. No, obviously I can't open this door. There must be some other way to get in there. I guess even more man-made than it was beforehand with the sewers. Almost like a different time. But yeah, we can't get through this door. We are officially at the end here. But you might be noticing that there is something we can still do here. It's all depending on your hearing. You can always go back out um, in order to check on anything, and you might notice that even though the FBI office is here, we can't actually go to it because uh, Winslow is MIA at the moment. But if you're listening, you might be able to hear voices in the background, and depending on how close you actually get to hearing them or the louder you're hearing them, you'll get up here. The back of the Raven Room. The torso killer is connected to them. Our brother Burdett grew strong. They who Issa take us. They who Issa take us. Stand 
That pendant, that's just the sort of talisman that Madame Cassandra said I should find a use against him. The candlestick, that must be the trick to getting into that cabinet. I've kind of blocked his name for a majority of the time that he's actually been in scenes, but yes. The person that has been haunting our dreams and that we were trying to get to is Eisenstadt. Dr. Eisenstadt, who is the person who disappeared um, from Austria a long time ago and nobody knew where he was. Apparently he made his way over to the US and is leading the Brotherhood inside of the Raven Room. And that's actually the entirety of Kingsbury Run. We can't do anything more, which means that we have a lot more information in order to fully go head on into the Raven Room next time. And with that, actually, we're about done half, half of Disc 5, so I will see you next time, everyone, as we head on into the Raven Room. <laughs>